Hello beer tubers and welcome to yet another beer review with me Peter the Master of Hobbits doing some more Colorado beer courtesy of my man Dalton. Dalton was kind enough to send this one all the way to Denmark uh, with some well work stouts that were barrel aged. We've only had one so far. We need to try the others eventually too but it's really hot right now outside so it's not often you feel like cracking stouts but those are also meant for sharing because they're hype beers. But this one he also sent, which sounds pretty cool. This is from a brewery I've never heard of called New Image Brewing Company, made in collaboration with Cerebral Brewing. And Cerebral, I know, and they've been to uh, MBCC, and they had some awesome stouts, some really, really good stouts. This is a, an attempt at brewing a sessionable stout, and this is Anostart, if that's what you, how you pronounce it. Apparently there's a reference to a TV show and I forgot what it was. Was it Parks and Rec or something? It's a show I haven't watched that a lot of people have told me to watch, but I haven't gotten around to. But they want to do a lower strength of coffee and cream inspired stout, which kind of reminds me of, for some reason, uh, Coffee and Cigarettes. Is that what it's called from Cellar Maker? I don't know why it reminded me of that beer, but that's also like a lower strength. Or is it full strength? Is it like 8%? I can't remember. Uh, it's, for some reason, I just thought of that beer when he sent this over. With a coffee stout made with, as it says, coffee and heavy cream. And I'm guessing heavy cream is lactose. 6.5%, all natural flavors, as it says on the side, able natural flavors. Uh, yeah, let's see how it is. It's, you know, usually like a nice 6%-ish plus milk stout with coffee can be really, really crushable. First off, though, when I cracked this, it gushed. It's been in the fridge for like five days, so that, you know... I think it's just a bit overcarved, but also when I felt the can, it was really, really hard. So I'm hoping we'll be all right uh, with the beer. And I get to break out the stout glass, which I never use, but we get to use it today, the speed glass stout glass. So pour us a pitch black, almost pitch black, a black color in the glass. There's some brown notes here and there, but otherwise it looks like what you'd want in a stout. And it's got a nice, slightly beige as head. It's very, a little bit foamy, but that's to be expected when you have so much carbonation in it. Because it's it was crazy. But yeah, let's check out the aroma. Thanks a ton for the beer, Dalton. Mm, yeah, uh, some coffee vibes, that's for sure. There is a little bit of like a berry vibe, which could be the coffee, but... Yeah, there's like a tart berry vibe. Usually when I smell that, I'm afraid of it. I've been in, oh man. Today has not been the day of doing reviews uh, because I've run into a few infections or just like beer, like, you, seltzers were okay, but just the review before, I, before this one, the beer was, um, was oxidized. This smells like it's got a lactic infection. Let's try it, cheers. Well, thank God. Whew. It's just roasted malt. Calm down, Peter. It's just, when you see a beer with lactose, well, maybe it's starting. There's something there on the end that's tart. And the can was really hard. I don't know, I didn't look this up really. I just cracked it. It's got some nice flavors. But it's really fizzy, hizzy and fizzy. I think there is a lactic infection starting here. It's just started. It's the thing's also it's summer, so before I put this in the fridge, it's just been standing out because I can't. I don't have room for all the beer in the fridge at all, and it's hot. You know, it's prime growing ground for bacteria. And I don't know if this is a brewery that's had problems or anything before, but you know, smelling it, it really puts off a lactic vibe. Like if you've ever made a home brew that's gotten infected. Or, you know, I've had plenty of infected beer. Plenty. But, yeah, it smells a bit like it's starting to take hold. There is, it's like, there's a nice coffee flavor. And first, like, oh, is it berries? No, but the more I smell it, it's just like, it's this, like, lactic berry vibe. Often, so this is an educational video now. When you have stouts and they get infected, Often what you get is you start to see the body being stripped. So like there's not a lot of body left in the beer, so the mouthfeel gets thinner. And then of course it gets, depending on the carbonation levels when it was released, but carbonation is like 
it spikes up like crazy because the lactic bacteria is eating up sugars. And then when you make a beer like this, for example, that has lactose, it's like perfect for lactic bacteria because they love to eat lactose. Uh, so they'll ferment that first or eat that and that will build up, uh, you know, CO2. But one of the byproducts is lactic acid. And lactic acid is a flavor we all know from like yogurt and, and, and dairy products. It's super healthy and it's good for you. There's no problem there. It's just not a desired flavor in beer, at least in clean beer production. Um, and in stouts, the flavor that it presents itself with is like often to me, it's like a tart berry vibe, almost a little bit like matchsticks. Like when, if you ever lit a matchstick, I know that's sulfur often, like what you smell when a matchstick is lit. I think it's sulfur, right? Uh, but and there's almost something matchsticky to me, like in, in stout that has like a, a lactic infection of sorts. And then there's like berry vibes and tartness. And it's like often not necessarily a sharp sourness, but you can taste it, like, and you can taste it quite quickly. And, uh, I'm pretty sure this is unfortunately another bad beer or a beer that's off <laughs> tonight. I'm gonna put out the video though, but I'm not gonna be a dick about it. Like, it, it there is like, it, the fun thing is that there is some sweetness left for sure. Like there is a sweet, like slightly lactosey sweet thing, like for the he heavy cream wipes, it's just like there for a split second, it's like, whoosh, and then it goes into like this sour tart berry thing, like tart forest berries. Almost think the flavor compounds you get in like uh, Flemish Old Boyne or uh, Flemish Reds, like often that's lactic bacteria you're tasting, and it's almost something like that, just like in a black beer. It's deaf, and like the more I drink it, the more I'm 100% sure this is a lactic infection starting. That's also probably why the can gushed. Uh, and actually the, the, the coffee is a little bit there, but I feel like the more I drink it, the more I'm just getting like charry maltiness and like this lactic um, berry kind of vibe. It's a shame, man. Especially because this is gonna be my, this is my first introduction to this brewery. And you know, I am usually, giving any brewer a, the benefit of the doubt at all times because I know how hard it is to make beer. Beer is not easy. It's one of the hardest crafts in the entire world. And, uh, you know, it happens. It happens. And a lot of people, it's, it's a learning curve and it's about process and it's about like just finding a lactic infection or any infection for that matter in your brew house or at Semfun. It, it can take a very long time. So I told you, you know, I always give brewers the benefit of the doubt like this. It's, but it's always a shame. And I think for a lot of people that don't know much about brewing that are getting into beer or whatever, or they just like, they maybe not even know what's wrong, but they can taste something maybe off or it's, it tastes a bit weird. And then that brewery or that beer for that matter is like, stamped this is shit. And then everything the brewery brews is shit, even though like they get over the hill. And I think that's a bit of a shame. I, I've seen that kind of happen before. So I always give a brewer a benefit, uh, the benefit of the doubt. Like, is it just one can maybe? Is it uh, the whole batch? I don't know. I, I will always go and revisit, but if I, keep constantly getting disappointed in quality, I, I of course, will stop. Um, ah, man, that's a shame. That's a real damn shame. I'm gonna have to break out some big guns or something. I don't know. I've had <laughs> two disappointments in a row. It kind of reminds me of if you guys got the double barrel aged Noah if you had it when it was released, it was awesome. And then if, uh, after sitting around for a while, it was Infectionis, because uh, that beer was infected as well, but it's the same. So I'm not gonna rate this. I'd never rate an infected beer. You could always tra trash talk, like, oh shit, brewer doesn't know, blah, blah, blah. but that's not constructive feedback in any way, shape or form. But you can tell, you know, what are you picking up? What are you tasting? And let the brewer know. The brewer's not gonna watch my video, like Cerebral Brewing and, and, and the new image is probably not ever gonna watch this video, but at least you can be 
nice about it and say, hey, something's up with this. That's just, you know, without being a dick about it. Because I know how hard it is, especially to figure out what's wrong. And I think if a brewer is doing, you know, mixed fermentation beers and the same, and doing clean beers and when I was a small facility, like oh, cross contaminations can happen like that. Like a pipeline that's not clean or a hose or like, that's not been cleaned thoroughly. And, and you know, it's, it's tough. So yeah, it's a shame, no rating. Man, I'm gonna go look for another beer now <laughs> after this. Wow, that's a shame, Dalton, but it happens. Maybe I should have just cracked this when I got it way back in, what, was it February or something? But it, since it was a stout, it's like, yeah, it's okay. I know it's a coffee stout, yeah, it's a stout. And then just like, that's always how it is with stouts. They get to sit for a little bit longer because they're stouts. They can usually handle it, but unfortunately not in the case of this. It's a shame, man. It, you can really feel, it feels a good descriptor of what Lactic uh, bacteria also does it's it makes beer feel empty Like it takes out so much character of the beer because of all the complex sugars that are in the beer That is what part of what makes beer like this makes its mouth feel and, and flavors and whatnot It's stripped apart and fermented uh, And that's part of you know the reason why Lactic in infected beer often ends up tasting a bit soulless when a lactic infection happens. Like, like something's wrong here. It feels empty. It feels that's a good explanation for it. And that def this definitely has that. Also, it gets thinner, and then of course it gets lactically sour. But that's what happens sometimes. So unfortunately, this one's going down the drain. I still urge you guys to check out both breweries if you can. Uh, and if you guys, guys had some beer from these guys, let me know what you thought of it. And maybe if you had this specific beer, let me know if I was just unlucky having an off can. Or or maybe this was the entire batch. I don't know. That's how it is. So if you guys had Anos Tart by, I'm probably saying that wrong, by New Image and Cerebral Brewing, let me know what you thought of it. Thanks a ton for sending anyways, Dalton. You're still the man. It was awesome that you helped out with getting some awesome Boltworks Works beers. But we still have to try. We got like three variants, I think, something like that. But yeah, if you guys had to let me know, and as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, ring the bell for future notifications about videos, and I'm gonna say cheers in uh, lactically infected beer, and see you guys in another video. Hope this was a bit educational. Cheers.